What if Alice Rivers is not just another witch, but a key player in a much bigger game? Have you ever wondered if everything we've seen in House of the Dragon is being manipulated from the shadows? One of the most mysterious characters in the second season of House of the Dragon is Alice Rivers, an illegitimate daughter of House Strong, considered by many to be a witch, and who, like Melisandre, is believed to be much older than she looks. But what would you think if I told you that the Three-Eyed Raven might have altered history in order for Alice to lead Daemon to victory? In this video, we'll explore the theory that Alice Rivers could be a servant of the Three-Eyed Raven. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. According to Grandmaster Munkin and Septon Eustace, Alice was a bastard sired by Lord Lionel Strong with an unknown woman when she was young. Munkin claims that Alice was a servant girl interested in potions, while Eustace claims she was a woods witch. But who is right? Is Alice a simple servant or a powerful sorceress? The dwarf mushroom offers a more disturbing version, claiming that Alice belonged to a previous generation and that she had served as a wet nurse. That is, she nursed children that were not hers, and that she nursed the children of Lionel Harwin and Laris, and possibly even Lionel himself. According to Mushroom, Alice was a sorceress who bathed in maiden's blood to keep herself young. But is this true? Or is it pure exaggeration? Also in the books Mushroom mentions that Alice was a prostitute. In the book we can read the following, and I quote, Both Eustace and Munkin considered Mushroom's claims to be fantastic. But even they agreed that Alice seemed unusually young for her age. As she must have been at least 40 when the Dance of the Dragons broke out. Although all of Alice's children were still born, she served as a wet nurse to many children at Harrenhal. But is it possible that Alice, like Melisandre and Kinvara, is older than she looks? The actress who plays Alice Rivers in the series revealed in an interview that her character is over 400 years old, which reinforces the theory that she could be a similar figure to Melisandre or Kinvara. These red priestesses, known for their longevity and mystical abilities, also practiced rituals and used potions to maintain their youth and power. Could it be that Alice also has an artifact similar to Melisandre's necklace that hides her true appearance and lengthens her life? Or could it be that her powers are darker and deeper? Kinvara also showed supernatural powers and a deep knowledge of the future. But what is hidden behind Alice Rivers? In the book it is told that Daemon was immune to her spells, and I quote, Whatever her powers, it would seem Daemon Targaryen was immune to them, for little is heard of this supposed sorceress whilst the prince held Harrenhal. The sudden bloodless fall of Black Heron's seat was counted a great victory for Queen Rhaenyra and her blacks. It served as a sharp reminder of the martial prowess of Prince Daemon and the power of Caraxes, the blood worm, and gave the queen a stronghold in the heart of Westeros to which her supporters could rally, and Rhaenyra had many such in the lands watered by the Trident. However, this was not what we were presented with in the series. In the second season, we saw an Alice who seemed to be completely dedicated to opening the way for Daemon to become the recipient of the visions and messages of the Three-Eyed Raven. But why did the series decide to show us this version of Alice? How important are those visions for the fate of Daemon and Westeros? I'll talk about this later. In the books, after the Greens retook Harrenhal, Prince Amond Targaryen ordered the death of the remaining members of House Strong in the castle. However, the Dragon Rider spared Alice's life and took her as spoils of war. What power did Alice have over Amon to make him spare her life? Was it a simple attraction or something darker? When she was informed of the defeat of the Greens at the battle by the lakeshore, Alice prevented an enraged Amon from strangling the squire who carried the message to Harrenhal. Could it be because she saw something in her visions that we don't know yet? Eustace disagrees with Mushroom's claim that Alice used potions to lure Sir Criston Cole and Amond. 
but Mushroom claims that they were competing for the affections of the nursemaid Alice Rivers, who had used potions and love filters to inflame their passion. Septon Eustace partly echoes the dwarf, but says that it was Amond, the only one really in love with Alice, to the point that he couldn't bear the thought of leaving her. So this woman helped Amon by giving him information using her magical or sorcery powers. But was it just love that Alice awakened in Amond, Or something more sinister? What role did her powers of sorcery play in all this? Part of the book says the following, and I quote, Prince Amon circled twice about the towers of Harrenhal, then brought Vagar down in the outer ward, with Caraxes a hundred yards away. The dragons glared balefully at each other, and Caraxes spread his wings and hissed, flames dancing across his teeth. The prince helped his woman down from Vagar's back, then turned to face his uncle. Nuncle, I hear you have been seeking us. Only you, Damon replied. Who told you where to find me? My lady, Amond answered. She saw you in a storm cloud, in a mountain pool at dusk, in the fire we lit to cook our suppers. She sees much and more, my Alice. Alice's connection to magic and her apparent immortality could suggest that she is part of the same mystical tradition as Melisandre and Kinvara. The similarity in her methods and abilities, such as the prophetic visions Alice has shown in the series, reinforce this idea. However, what sets Alice apart is her connection to the Three-Eyed Raven and her role as his servant, something that uniquely places her in the Game of Thrones universe. And while in previous videos I've talked about the theory that Alice could be Melisandre herself, and I thought it was quite possible, it's this very connection to the Three-Eyed Raven that makes me dismiss that theory. Alice could be a witch who has always been collaborating with the Raven. Because as I was saying, Alice was dedicated to open the way for Daemon to receive the visions and the message of the Three-Eyed Raven. Since they both met at Harrenhal, she wasted no time and began to work on Daemon to make him understand that the visions and dreams are not nonsense as he thought they were when he listened to Rhaenyra talk about what her father Viserys revealed to her about the dream of Aegon the Conqueror and the prince that was promised. Daemon simply thought about strength and dragonfire as he saw nothing else outside of that. Vision after vision and dream after dream, Alice paved the way for the great revelation of the Three-Eyed Raven, while at the same time, she moved in the shadows to pave the way for Daemon to achieve his purpose at Harrenhal. As I had mentioned in a video before, that goes hand in hand with the Three-Eyed Raven's plan, for both the Targaryens and the Raven share the same enemy, the Night King. So Alice Rivers eliminates Lord Grover Tully to benefit Daemon. But why would Alice be a servant of the Three-Eyed Raven? What is the connection between the two? In the previous video, we talked about the old gods and the possibility that Brynden Rivers is the human representation of this entity. Since the old gods were worshipped by the children of the forest and the people of the north, who listened to their whispers through the weirwoods, and the Three-Eyed Raven uses the network of weirwoods to connect to the past, present, and future. So it is possible that it always has been Brynden Rivers, that is, the Three-Eyed Raven, who was whispering to his followers. Now, south of Westeros, the old gods lost both their power and their followers, except for House Blackwood, and Brynden Rivers' mother was Melissa Blackwood. So if this theory is true, then this brings to the table another connection that we cannot overlook between Alice and the Three-Eyed Raven, namely Brynden Rivers, and that is their origin. They are both bastards of the Riverlands, which is why both of their surnames are Rivers. However, there is also the possibility that Alice is connected to the ancient and feared religion of the Black Goat. In the books it is mentioned that the Black Goat is a dark deity that was worshipped in Old Valyria, the birthplace of the Targaryens. We could speculate that Alice as a witch could be using the rituals of this ancient religion to manipulate Daemon and guide his actions. If so, this would make her not only a servant of the Three-Eyed Raven, 
but also a practitioner of one of the darkest and most dangerous religions in this universe. This connection could explain why Damon sees such disturbing visions, why Alice seems to have such a strong hold on his mind, why her influence over Damon is so profound, and why her visions are filled with dark and violent omens. The combination of the magic of the Weirwoods with the dark rituals of the Black Goat would make Alice a very powerful and dangerous figure in equal measure. So if Alice was the one who got Damon to see the vision in the Weirwood tree in the last episode, this is a clue that she could be acting as a servant of the Three-Eyed Raven. This vision was not only a major revelation for Damon, but also a direct manipulation of fate, orchestrated by the Raven through Alice. In one of our previous videos, I discussed how Bran Stark could have intervened in key events, such as Jon Snow's resurrection or preventing Caitlyn Stark from becoming Lady Stoneheart. If Bran, under the influence of the Three-Eyed Raven, has already been shown to be able to alter history in the past, it is quite possible that the Raven is also playing a role in the events of House of the Dragon. If the Three-Eyed Raven has indeed altered history, rewriting it through visions and manipulations, then Alice Rivers could be a central player in his game. By allying herself with Damon, Alice would not only be ensuring that the Raven's visions are fulfilled, but she would also be guiding Damon onto a predestined path, one that favors the Raven's long-term plans. So Damon becomes a pawn, not just in the battle for the Iron Throne, but in a much larger battle, involving mystical forces and the fate of all of Westeros. It is interesting to consider that Alice may have been involved in timelines before, perhaps even trying to influence characters like Amond, as mentioned in the books. However, in this new timeline, influenced by the Raven, her attention was directed to Daemon, contrary to the book. This change could reflect the Raven's attempts to secure his dominance and set the stage for future events we do not know about yet. The possibility that the Three-Eyed Raven intervened in the story to bring Alice to a crucial place in Damon's life is both interesting and disturbing. It suggests that the events as we know them may not be the result of simple human actions, but of deliberate manipulation by a higher force. Alice, with her ability to influence Damon, could be a key player in a much larger plan, where his every decision inevitably leads him towards an outcome predetermined by the Three-Eyed Raven. This theory adds complexity to the character of Alice Rivers, as she would not only be a powerful witch, but also an agent of a much older and wiser entity, whose ultimate goal could be the protection of Westeros from greater threats, such as the Night's King. By manipulating Damon and guiding his actions, Alice could be ensuring that events unfold in a way that favors victory. In the final battle between ice and fire. But what implications does this have for Damon? If he truly is a pawn in a larger game, will he have to make any sacrifices? These are questions I ask myself, but what is clear is that the influence of the Three-Eyed Raven through Alice Rivers could have been a crucial factor in the story we know altering the course of events to serve a much greater purpose. But tell me, what do you think of all this? Do you think Alice is a servant of the Three-Eyed Raven? Share your opinion with me in the comments. And if you liked this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos of theories, news and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.